Welcome to the Geeks, a very special episode where I get to interview two, not one, two movie legends, soon to be movie legends. <laughs> uh, with me I have is a good, good friend of mine, like a, like a brother to me, Robert Vincent Gallegos. And with him as uh, the director of his movie, Aaron Casera. I had to get the Italian in it. Casera. Let me, let me roll the R's. Um, so, guys, you are doing, you've, you've done, you've completed filming Live, Laugh, Love, a movie. I'm, I don't want to get into details about it. I've, I've read everything. I've been following the Instagram and everything. I'm so intrigued by this. I'm so excited that, Robert, you've gotten to, uh, you know, kick off one of your lifelong goals. But what I want to start out talking with is, you know, first, like how you guys kind of came to the decision to make this movie. I know, Robert, we've talked for years about scripts. We've watched horror movies. We we love the genre. But how, how did you get to this movie and what intrigued you both about doing this one as, Robert, your first feature? Um, well, actually, it's a short. It's you're short. I, I know. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> short. No, you're doing mean it's a feature. I haven't done shit. Right. So, you know. <laughs> I don't want people to be like, oh my gosh, I thought it was a feature. What the fuck is this shit? Um, <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I honestly, I was just talking to Aaron about this today. I wrote um, the first version of, it was actually called Good Samaritans at the time. And I wrote it um, in 2011 when I was in film school. So I wrote the script and it was real short. And um, just something that kind of sat, you know, for, for a while and um, I had seen some ad or something online for this screenwriting competition where you won this like really cool skull trophy. I forget, I think it was called like Screen Fest or something like that. And I was like, oh, that would be a cool trophy. So I pulled out like Live, Laugh, Love or it was Good Samaritans and I decided that I'd rewrite it and um, make it a little bit more current and a little bit more emotion um, in the script. So that's kind of how I got started and I rewrote it. I added um, a lot more uh, drama. I made it about a divorced couple um, and it, it's a drama mixed with a horror movie. And that's like kind of how I decided to revisit it. Um, so that, that, that was the genesis of me revisiting the, 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 the script. So Aaron, I don't know, do you wanna, do you wanna, do you wanna go from there as far as uh, talk about how you-, you Yeah, discovered? sure. Yeah. Um... So yeah, so Robert, uh, Robert and I were, I would say more acquaintances in high school, but we stayed in touch. So we like knew about each other. We hung out a few times. We followed each other on Instagram and he posted that he had finished a feature script about the Colombo murders. And, you know, growing up in Elk Grove, you hear about it constantly. My parents knew Patty Colombo. They like were oh, in really? school. Yeah, they were in school with her. And when... Actually, when when we first um, like so, I think I was home for Christmas right after I proposed Robert. Uh, after I proposed to Robert, after I suggested we make this movie, get on your, get on your knees. I was on my knees. I was like, "Please, Robert, let's make this movie together." Um, yeah, and so I was home for Christmas, and I was talking to my dad about um, like how this kind of started. We were re like really early. I don't even think we had a DP at the time. Um, and that's usually like the first person I try to get on board as a DP. And so I'm talking to my dad and he's like, yeah, he's like, actually, he's like in film class in high school, I made an eight millimeter film and Patty Colombo's in it. And I was like, holy shit. I was like, no way. I was like, where do you know where it is? He's like, I don't know where it is, but, um, but yeah, so anyway, so I, I saw that Robert wrote the script. I was like, dude, I really want to read it. Will you send it to me? And he was like, of course. So he sent it to me. I sent him a few scripts. Um, and we were just having like a semi-regular, you know, screenwriters kind of uh, woe is me fest a little bit, but also really trying to like help each other out with writing and like figure out like what, what we're trying to get at. Um, and then he was like, oh, do you want to read this short? And I was like, yeah, sure, send it over. Like, I'll check it out, definitely. And I read it before the next, like, the next meeting. I read it, like, the, that day. And then immediately was like, dude, we should make this. <clears throat> and um, I think Robert was, were, you, you seemed really surprised. 
when when I said that. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, because I mean, I didn't have any intention of making it. You know, <laughs> I like I said, it was it was one of these things where it was like it, it really was like you know, it was like it was it was what it was twenty. 21 or was it, it wasn't 2020 no it's 2021 right yeah we connected right. probably in like Octo i think your post was like in october of 2021 yeah yeah so so yeah so i was just like hey you know i've got time and i just want to do this to you know maybe get a cool trophy or whatever i think there was money too like you went like you know a few grand or whatever so no i had no no intention of, of doing it it was just like hey here this is you know this is this is this is a a script for you to read, you know, that's pretty much it. So yeah, I was a little bit surprised. Um, uh, and then too, like I, re I, I knew that Aaron was in the industry, but I didn't know, like, I didn't, I hadn't seen any of his films. I didn't really know where he, like what he did. So it, there was really no kind of like, oh, I can get people together to make this. I didn't even think about it. What, what a terrible friend, you know, like you, you, you haven't seen any of his, any of his movies or anything. <laughs> Well, I mean, I have now. At the, at the time, I count have. Robert. Like you're not supporting him beforehand. Like, jeez. <laughs> no, because no, I, I do remember Robert. We talked about it in 2021. It was like the yeah, because it was before I left for Florida when we were mm -hmm. together in Chicago, and you were talking about entering this contest. And you're like, mm -hmm. I'm trying to do this. I've been rewriting this thing. I just, yeah, you know, and you were just so. You were you were happy about rewriting it, but you seemed frustrated about writing it because you're just like you weren't happy with it. Anytime mm -hmm. you brought it up, like you were you were happy with it, but you weren't. It wasn't to the to the level that you wanted it to be. Right. right. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, Robert was great to work with because he was he's he's very like uh, what I would say is like a generous screenwriter. So he like brought me. He was willing to bring me into the process, and we. We like worked the script a little bit together, um, and then, but like the the frame of it always stayed exactly the same because that was just so f fucking great, you know. It's like it's like really what drew me to it—the double twist. Um, yeah. yeah, really rad. So, I guess Robert, do you want to do you want to tell everybody a little bit, kind of like the like a high level view of what the movie is about? Besides, you know, I know you said yeah. it's about a couple. Yeah. Right. So basically what it's about, it's about uh, uh, a couple that um, is having a really ha heavy conversation in in uh, in their relationship about infidelity and um, right at the height of the emotional intensity, uh, a girl comes to the door in distress, uh, begging to be let in. And uh, the couple are kind of, you know, it's, it's late at night. They're you know, having their, their discussion. They don't know what to do. Should we let her in? Should we not let her in? And um, they ultimately let her in. And um, uh, it might not have been that good of an idea for them to, to let her in. So that's that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> no, that's, that's fine. And, and we know Aaron gave away that there's a double twist. So everybody will be uh, on edge for that. Yeah. Um, right. Yeah. I like to say it's a horror movie uh, masquerading as a relationship drama. And th that's very much on purpose. Um, I think there's going to be some people once we screen it that are going to be like, "This all seems maybe a little a, a little bit random." And it's it's very much <laughs> we want people to 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 get in to it and be like, "Oh my gosh!" Like, and, and I mean, for for real, like I want people. I mean, as as you know, I'm divorced, and um, I want people to. Even if you're not divorced, I know people have had these conversations with their significant other where they're really, really heavy and really intense. And just like, I want those scenes to resonate with people and then for, for them to lock in on these characters like, oh my gosh, are they going to get through this? What's going to happen? Are they going to get divorced? And then it just totally changes. And it's like, what happened? Like, what happened? You know? And it, um, it metaphorically, there's a metaphorical payoff, I'll say. <laughs> <laughs> um that that uh, and that's that's kind of going back to uh we've we've labeled it as as emo horror uh on set because um it, it is very much a heart on your sleeve uh maybe cloaked in some some uh some metaphor emo song is, is why i think it is yeah. so did, did you get out the line tria to, to do the score 
<laughs> no, no, I didn't. Maybe on the next, maybe on the next one. But it definitely, um, I definitely, when I when I look at it, it definitely sound, it, it it feels like an alkaline trio song. It really does to me. It does at least. Um, but uh, yeah, we we do have an awesome. We, right now, the score is being done by a really awesome composer, um, and we've heard some of it, and it's it's pretty it's pretty legit. <laughs> awesome. right. Yeah, Vivian, Vivian has done like he's done a ton of horror movies, um, and he's he's been in the genre for a long time. So, yeah. Aaron, yeah, getting, getting into your directing of this and, and, and picking this up with Robert, um, you know, because you know I didn't know and. Uh, uh, I didn't know you went to Elk Grove High School. Uh, this, this whole, I, I went to Elk Grove. It's, it's this funny little connection here. I should have got Jarvis to jump on the call with us too. <laughs> Go Grunge. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, number, tw- number 24, Coca-Cola yeah. player of the week. <laughs> oh my God. He's going to hear this. He's going to get so mad at us. Um, <laughs> although my listeners do know Jarvis. So we, we did oh, nice. this podcast for a bit. Um, but I'm curious, like, what what types of films do you enjoy directing? Do you do you like the the because I don't know, you know, the emo horror that has been developed here by Robert, like, or are you are you more into, you know, no, shock it's, horror or dramas well, or comedies? Yeah, I mean, I'm not exactly like I don't think I stick to one one genre necessarily. Um, though I would say that um, like relationship. Uh, turmoil is sort of at the heart of a lot of the things that I've worked on. So my first film after school is called Barista, and it, it, it's a relationship drama. Um, it's about a couple kind of sh- struggling, not struggling with their relationship surviving, but struggling with the well-being of one of the partners in the relationship. Um, and then I did a comedy that is also, it's not a, you know, it, there's no drama between the, the couple, but it definitely centers around a couple. Uh, and a feature that I've been working on for a while that I'm kind of putting out there into the grant world and into the lab world definitely aligns with uh, Live, Laugh, Love in a really kind of in a pretty, pretty strong way. Um, more in 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 the, the like the tradition of, you know, like Lars von Trier or David Lynch, where it's just a little bit more bizarre uh, definitely horrific, uh, but not in the more traditional like horror or monsters or like, you know, uh, sort of like bad guy kind of way, you know, <clears throat> it's more like the, the horror exists between the couple and it may or may not be imagined. So I'm, I'm always sort of exploring like relationship drama uh, in most of the scripts that I've been writing, the features. Yeah. yeah. And that's definitely what a big part of what drew me to the script was like the uh, sort of talking about infidelity, you know, and that's that's kind of the the central metaphor here that's going on in this film and doing it through horror is, I think, just, you know, it makes perfect sense. Yeah, I I don't think that there would be. Go ahead, Robert. Sorry. Oh, I don't think there would be that. I don't think that the emo horror would have been a thing without Aaron, honestly. (laughs) <laughs> I think that I think I, I seriously I and I think and, and no I mean it, it might sound I I think and I I talked about this from like the beginning I think Aaron's sensibility it's like his sense his sensibility like even watching like barista and and just his sensibility in the films that he likes um it's like hey here now take this and do this horror movie and he put his own kind of spin I don't think the performances that we got or the actors that we got, or the performances that he got out of them. I, I, I don't know, I, they, they really like, they kind of make it way more emo than I think I, I could have made but, it. You know, but Robert, I mean, I think I, it started to go in that direction a lot when you told me that The, the Strangers was a big inspiration. Yeah, and yeah, like that, yeah. The yeah. way that the opening, like t- the first twenty right. minutes of that scene, that movie unfolds, right, right. is pretty yeah. freaking emo too. And so I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. cool, <laughs> like let's like that. I I like that. I can do that. Let's lean into that whole yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I thought I thought it was. It, I think that was one of the like that was that's always been one of the strengths of this whole collaboration is that we come from two 
vastly different sensibilities, but we're able to kind of give each other room to create something and bounce ideas off each other. Yeah. And, you know, there's stuff that he comes up with that I'm like, I'm just like, how did you come up with that? Like, that's awesome, you know, and vice versa. So it's, it's definitely a good co collaboration on this because we're uh, pretty flexible. And I think having those two different mindsets really makes it something unique. Yeah, agreed. Well, tell me a little bit about your cast. Um, yeah, so we, I went out and once we started casting, um, we posted an ad on like, a, I think it's called Backstage. And I had this idea that I didn't want to give anyone the script. So um, so we auditioned the, the ladies first. And <clears throat> I, I wanted to do that because I think it's like the more emotionally like beefy role. So I wanted to cast uh, the lady first and then figure out who would play well off of her. Um, and so I did a bunch of auditions. And I just kind of explained to them the script. I'm like, it's a relationship drama. Um, you've been cheating on your partner. And like, and I just walked them through what the scenario was. And I was like, and then somebody knocks at the door. And I was like, let's, and let's just walk into it. And they would ask a lot of questions and sort of like gain information. And I would like, we would build it up. And then it was like, okay. And then I usually would play off them in the scene. And the person who we ended up casting, she also, she definitely felt like the strongest because I remember when, when we played the scene together, I was like, whoa, I was like, I feel really uncomfortable. Like, I feel like you and I are in a fight. And she's like, yeah, me too. She's like, that was awesome. <laughs> and then, um, and then she sent, everyone sent, I was like, okay, now I'll give you the script and just do, if you don't mind, like do a little improv and then lead it into the script, however you see fit. Um, and a bunch of people, you know, they sent us their things and Melissa Harrison, she was just like weeping on camera. It was like super emotional, super intense. And her scene partner was like really good too. And, um, we found out that it was her real life partner. And I had this fantasy because I'm sort of obsessed with eyes wide shut. So I was like, oh, it'd be really cool if we could get like a couple, like, you know, I don't think like, I was like, probably won't happen, but that would be rad if we could. And so then when she, when I found out it was, it was, um, it was her real life partner. I just kind of confirmed with Robert, like, are you cool with this? Can and he was just like, yeah, let's do it. So we just like cast, um, we cast, uh, we cast them both right away. And then we gave the, one of the other roles to a friend of Robert's named Casey. Robert, you want to, Tell, tell tell about the other two people. Yeah, well, uh, so Casey um, is uh, an, an actor that I've known for some time. I, I worked on a, a real a low budget horror movie like when I was in film school. So probably again, like once again, like 2011, 2012. And um, I worked with her like one time and I feel like we connected at some other point. But um, when we first, when, when this film, uh, when we were first casting for this, I'll be like, oh, you know, Casey, Casey's from Chicago, I'll ask Casey. And I didn't know that she was in Terrifier 2. Because Terrifier 2 wasn't out yet. Okay. And, and uh, did you see it? Of course, I love Terrifier and Terrifier 2. Do you know who Casey is? Was she the one that got uh, uh, at home with her mom? The, be the bedroom? The bed oh, yeah. Yeah, so that's Casey. So, yeah. So Fantastic. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, so, um, so, so we, I mean, I knew that she was in, I knew that she was in Terrifier 2 because it was on her IMDb, but it, Terrifier 2 wasn't out yet, you know, when we were doing yeah. this. So then um, it was just like, cause she originally, she was originally um, trying out for Jane. And um, so, you know, we, we it was a, a process, like we, we really did, we were kind of on and off and whatnot. And um, once we cast it or cast it, excuse me, once we cast Melissa and Justin, uh, we still had the role of the girl comes to the door and um, asked Casey if she wanted to do it. And she was totally, totally down to do it and came out and did an awesome job and was really awesome to hang out with and told us lots of Terrifier 2 stories, <laughs> which was cool. And um, I missed yeah. that part. I didn't get into the stories. 
<laughs> well, you were, yeah. Well, you were. Well, Aaron was. Aaron was on set. I was, was going to say I you was, were working. Out, you know, Robert was, <laughs> Robert was in the back and just hanging out. I was, I, I was hanging out. I was hanging out with the actors for the most part. <laughs> and, oh, and going to pick up food. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's, um, that's a good thing for a writer to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was awesome. Like, cause everybody, like, it was so much fun. Like, everybody, if there's anybody that you want to be hanging out with at like two o'clock in the morning it's like this group of people like hanging out with justin and uh uh melissa and casey and jay lisa and jay moore uh just wait <laughs> another just, just, Grove, just uh, alum. waiting between oh, yeah. between uh thanks so yeah aaron you can you can launch into how jay got involved yeah so jay he he came and visited me out in brooklyn um in the in like may of last year and he was saying he was doing some acting and i was like oh well that's cool i was like why don't we uh why don't we just like see if jay's down for the to the for the role because one of our producers also said it like she was like it would be kind of cool to play with race a little bit in this whole thing like cast it to like try to mess with gender or not gender but like uh with racial stereotypes you know and so her original thought was to have a white dude come to the door. Um, and that was like going to be, and there was going to be like a mixed couple as the couple. And I forget what she said the girl was going to be, but it was like trying to like shake things up a bit. And, you know, we ended up casting everybody else as white. And so I was like, Oh, well let's like, let's maybe we should try and cast somebody of color to be the, like the, the bad guy that comes to the door. Like, that would be kind of funny and smart. Um, and Jay had been acting. So I was like, hey, man, would you be down to, like, send us a tape uh, for this role? And he was like, oh, sure. Yeah, no problem. So he, like, so I send him the script, sends him the tape. And I send it to Robert first because I was scared. I was like, what if I don't like Jay's acting? I was like, I can't, I can't look at it. So I send it to Robert. And he's like, yeah, it's great. I was like, okay, good. Cool. And then, yeah, we cast Jay. And he was, he was a delight to have on set. It was a pleasure. Also working with one of my best friends from high school was awesome. And I mean, come on, you get you get a chance to have Jay Moore in your movie. You yeah, know? I actually I actually just posted uh, on our Instagram, and I mean, this guy is so well known in Chicago. I I, <laughs> I posted on Instagram a picture from a still from the the uh, from the movie, and I put like, "Hey kids, it's Jay Moore," and I got like three people that messaged me in my inbox like you know jay you know jay you know jay i'm like yeah we went to high school together and he's in my movie Wait, people and that so, you didn't that didn't go to school with us were, were messaging yeah you? yeah no yeah yeah people that didn't go to school with us like there's a lot of people that uh, know jay, jay i mean jay but jay, jay was even like that in high school he was like jay just knew Quiet. everyone he knew everyone yeah. yeah yeah it was wild yeah I mean, there, there was a there was a there's a funny story about jay's audition um so he sends oh. us this audition, very, very crude audition of him. He's outside a door where he lives or something and, and doing the scene. And um, and so I'm getting all, you know, intellectual with Aaron. And I'm like, oh, you know, it was really cool. I really liked the choices he made. And like, it seemed like he was really like, you know, almost we were both, like trying not to. Yeah, we yeah, yeah, we were like, he's, he's like, he's like trying to force the words out and come to find out that he was like, trying to hold back because he didn't want people to think that that he was really trying to break into somebody's house and the cops he didn't want to get arrested <laughs> <laughs> he, that's what he told us oh what man I, that's hilarious because yeah, because like, me and robert were talking about it and we were all excited and it was like yeah that was really cool how we did that and so i tell him i'm like yeah really like, like he's trying this. not to be too loud which is really what you do he's <laughs> like he's like yeah he's like that wasn't really i was just like i had nothing to do with the act i was yeah. just like i was trying to be quiet so funny. <laughs> that's yeah, that's yeah. great. That's awesome. I mean, that's I haven't seen Jay in, in forever. So it'd be it's cool that you guys got uh, got him. I hadn't this. before then either. I hadn't seen him in years before that. Well, yeah. It, um, that, that's nuts. <laughs> it's just it's a small world, you know, like that's it's just just kind of fun. Right. So. Right, exactly. Exactly. All right. Well, you know, I want the uh, the listeners here, you know, because I know you guys are, are raising some money for for the movie. So, um, where can they help? You know, donate so the so the so the, the film can can be finished and, and, and released. And I know you guys are looking to to do some uh, uh, festivals and stuff with it. Uh, so, what where where can they go to help you? 
We have a, a fundraiser on Seed and Spark, which I don't know if anybody, if you guys don't know about it, it's like it's basically like Kickstarter, but very film specific. So it's only movies, uh, TV series, and podcasts is the only thing that they raise allow you to raise money for. Awesome. So Seed and Spark, yeah. I'll make sure we put a a link down below. Um, cool. Yeah, I'll send you the link. The link is like. Um, you know, it's not it's not like Seed and Spark slash Live Laugh Love. It's like there's characters in there and stuff that I don't really yeah. like. You know? I remember I looked, I clicked um, that and I'm like, all this stuff just popped up. I'm like, am I going to an adult film site? What is going on here? I'm like, Robert <laughs> Wood sent go. me to one. <laughs> <laughs> or or if you just go to you know go to Seed and Spark and just search Live Laugh Love, it it'll pop up. Um, I mean, but yeah, we're doing really. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, and also you have you have the Instagram. I know that's where I've been seeing a lot of the, the, the yeah films. the Instagram, which is at Live Laugh Love Movie. Um, oh, yeah, yeah the, we're we're about the other thing that I was going to say, which which does even if you can't support like financially, it does. There is some sort of like incentives that get unlocked on Seed and Spark if you just follow it. So it, it, it it's also appreciated if you follow us on the like actual Seed and Spark page oh, that'd be great yeah yeah and right now we're at 63 percent of our goal yeah i believe I think. Yeah, so we're at six, 64 and we have 18 days left yeah um so yeah so we're, we're we, we had a pretty good uh a pretty good beginning but um yeah i have one more question for both of you guys because you guys are more into horror than i am like i'm not as it's not that, like i don't like the genre i just i'm not as uh avid a watcher um is emo is this like emo horror is that is that a like real thing ever coined the term or is it like has it been going for a while no i i i, I feel like i i i mean maybe people have used it i just used it because we we're playing that song on on set <laughs> yeah the so, there's a, there's a song that's that's very emo it's not, i wouldn't say it's an emo song but it's it's a pretty light song and very emotional and we were playing it on set during while we were like prepping and stuff like that and i was just like oh man this is the most emo horror movie you've ever seen or something like that um no i don't not that not that i know of i just um, i've never heard the 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 full the term emo horror to uh uh to explain anything so <laughs> it's uh I'm, I'm trying to look it up here. Nope, I don't see anything listed as emo horror. I see best emo movies. Oh, Donnie Darko they consider it as an emo horror. So, but do you think it was? But was it Donnie Darko horror? This I don't is, think Donnie you, Darko was really. I horror. don't think it was horror either. I mean, it had a cool rabbit, you know, but that's about yeah. Different. I mean, it was a, it was a dark science fiction movie, but I don't think it didn't maybe seem that like. should be emo sci-fi. So. Emo sci-fi. Emo sci-fi. Yeah, there I you think go. The, yeah. the relationship. The relationship breakup part has yeah. that's the most emo thing about it, you know. Right. It's yeah. like you know, Robert coined that trademark that, <laughs> take, take that now. trademark it, emo horror. So. Get the get all the URLs, lock them down, right? <laughs> right. Yeah, well, start a clothing I'm, line. Yeah, <laughs> start a clothing line. Get the whole. Yeah, it'll be in hot topic. Here. Live, laugh, love T-shirts <laughs> will be in hot topic by the by the end of next year. That's that's the dream, right? I mean, that's. That's, that's the, the that's the dream, you know, and make the full length. If you could only tell high school world. Robert, high, if you could tell high school Robert that he would have T-shirts at Hot Topic uh, of, of a movie he made, I think, yeah, <laughs> that, yeah, crazy. That, I'd be probably pretty thrilled about that too when I was in high school. Yeah, right. Hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Stickers. <laughs> So you know, because uh, I want I want the, the 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 group here listening and watching to get you get, get to know a little bit about you guys. I know we talked about kind of like Aaron, like your 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 like the type of movies you've directed. But what is your go to movie for enjoyment? Like what what do you enjoy? Like what is the genre of film that you enjoy just to watch? Um, I mean, I'm I'm kind of a sucker for science fiction. You know, yeah. I I almost watch any science fiction movie. Um, so are you like an intellectual science fiction, or are you talking like yeah, Star Wars? No, I'm talking every anything and everything. Like even if it, if I I could watch put a movie on, I'm like I know this is gonna be bad. I still kind of need to watch it. But I definitely am into like Tarkovsky, you know, Solaris and Stalker, 
and you know um who is the guy who did primer do you know that one from like 2004 i remember that movie yeah yeah, yeah. so i mean it's really like the anything in the sci-fi genre i'm like i'm game for sign me up so you're, you're a bougie sci-fi guy i get that i get it <laughs> Yeah, for sure. Robert, I, I, you know, I'm going to ask you. I probably know at least the genre, but uh, you know, you, you might you might surprise me here because it's been a while. Um, but what, uh, what's the go-to movie these days, Robert? I, you know, I, I'm really liking. Um, I mean, yeah, I like horror movies, it, of course, obviously. Um, I really don't watch that many because there's not that many good ones. There's not any good um, ones. Yeah, I mean, that's... yeah, I'm not. I'm not the kind of horror fan that, that watch. <laughs> What, right. I know I'm not the kind of horror fan that watches everything. Like I know a lot of people that it's like if it's a horror movie, they're watching it. They don't care about the budget or anything. And I usually like to, um, you know, you know, like I like to pick and choose, you know, but I really I do really like a relationship dramas and uh, stuff that has to do with. And I mean, may, maybe it's because I'm divorced that I like anything that has to do with like like marriage story was 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 great. And I think, you know what, I think to this kind of stuff, you know what, what would be an emo movie? High fidelity, I would say, is a pretty. Oh cool yeah, movie. and that's one of my. I mean, I right. think this is right. And that, this yeah. is our overlap, Robert. This is like like you're coming more from the horror world, and like right overlap is the relationship drama stuff. Right, right, yeah. right. Or even I would even say Swingers is kind of an emo type movie. You know, Mikey sitting on his on his floor, eating oh, yeah, definitely. mommy or whatever, calls yeah. the girl a bunch of times. <laughs> but yes, that is true. Movies. That's yeah. Like lately, and then I'm I'm really into TV a lot too. Like I really liked um, they did scenes from a marriage. Fleisch, Fleischman is in trouble. The one with Jesse Eisenberg yeah. is again about relationships. Um, yeah, seen, I, I really like. Did you see Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? I did not. I did oh not. man, that is that is one of the most like that's a horror movie. But they're like my like you don't need any. There's no gore. There's no monsters. It's just like those two people are horrific to each like other. The old, like a, like it, it's an older movie, right? Yeah. It's, I, thought they, I thought they remade that, didn't they? Oh, I don't know. I mean, there I, there might have been a couple versions of it, but there was like a it's 70s. Like, like the 60s? With, a, 60s or 70s, late 60s with Elizabeth Taylor. Uh, uh, directed yeah. by okay, Michael. okay. It's, it's, okay. It's I fun. know I've seen that version with Elizabeth yeah. Taylor, but it's been a long time. So you're saying there's one after I thought one. there was another one, but I could be okay. wrong. Yeah. Well, that one maybe it's like a made-for-TV movie or something about this, you know? Because mm -hmm. I remember it in yeah, the they're always doing remember seeing stuff mini, mini series. Oh yeah, they're always doing these crazy remake mini series things. Great expectations, lowered expectations. No, I made that up. <laughs> terrible jokes. <laughs> What's the one that just came out <laughs> about the '50s couple in the '50s, or like couple with Elizabeth Olsen? Oh, that's, oh and the that's one a that's horror funny. film. That's one, that's it's, one a, it's like a, it's can't, like the one about that. They, it's coming out like this week, I think. Oh, is it? Yeah. Elizabeth Olsen. Yeah, it's like Love and Death or something like that. Yeah, I think Who, that is. Is, yeah. is it a horror? No, I think it's a true crime. It's oh, a true okay. crime, I think. Well, a true yeah, crime, but like, in, in, I mean, she's murdering people, I think. I think that's the the sense of it, at least yeah. from the trailer. I don't know the story. Like a not not a supernatural horror, but still a, like a mm -hmm. like a mass murderer horror. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, now I'm even more excited to watch it. <laughs> How about you, Lil? What are you watching? I mean, looking behind me, that's all I watch is superhero movies. Yeah. Now. It's, yeah. It's, you know, <laughs> I will say I'm excited for The Flash, and it's just because Michael Keaton's going to be in it. Well, of course, so. Michael Keaton. Hey, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, well, he's going to be Batman in it. Batman in it. Wait, what? Yeah, you didn't see the trailer? No, no, I did not. Damn, that's yeah. Cool. He's, oh wow, he's yeah. Batman. They, they just dropped a new trailer with it where he uses the the line in the the original where he's talking to the Joker and he's like, you know, you want to get nuts? Let's get oh. nuts. You know, he, he reuses that line here. Uh, um, it's like a multiverse. Yeah. Well, they're stealing from yeah. Marvel. Marvel's already doing the multiverse. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Because Af Af uh, Ben Affleck's in it too as Batman. Yeah. Which then, uh, and they brought back Michael Shannon as, uh, as Zod from the Man of Steel movie. Wow. Um, because because it, it, I mean this one's basically restarting the DC universe because James Gunn's taking it over and rewriting everything. So okay. But how does that work with Guardians of the Galaxy? This is his last Guardians movie because he became president oh. of DC. He is co-president okay. of DC Studios. Wow. Oh, wow. So he wow. uh 
when Marvel fired him for, uh, a couple years ago due to mm-hmm. some, some shenanigans online. And then oh, they he got fired for that? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, he, he lost a lot. Of, so DC picked him up to, to do the Suicide Squad. Uh, right. And, and right. So, but in between that, he still had the script for Guardians because he finished all that. They were ready to like get it going. And then, of course, COVID happens and everything. So uh-huh. um, they brought they decided to bring him back. You know, the, the cast and everything, like they want James uh-huh. back because it's the, the end of their trilogy. And so Marvel brought him back. Kevin Feige fought, fought for him to come back. And uh, but he's already was doing the Suicide Squad and already signed on to do Peacemaker and stuff like that for for DC. And then once uh, I guess HBO and everything got bought out, you know, the, whatever all this the business nonsense that's happening over at HBO and now the app is going to be called Max and stuff like that. Um, they decided to like reboot the whole DC property and like they fired a bunch of people and and James Gunn and I think uh, what's the guy's name Saffron uh, is it Alan Saffron I can't remember they're they're co co uh, presidents of, of the studio and Gunn is like laying the whole universe down like a whole new thing he's got like a, a creature feature movie coming out with like horror characters that were like it's, uh, it was a comic from I think the seventies. Um, he started out a trauma, didn't he? Didn't he do movies for trauma? He did. Gunn? Like he trauma did. Yeah, that's yeah. why. Uh, what's his face from the the trauma guy? Why can't can, 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 Oh, like Kaufman, Lloyd Kaufman. Lloyd Kaufman's in the first Guardians movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, the 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 um, our special effects artist Matt Hoffman, who you have you you've met Matt before, right? He Sounds played in Shooting probably. Blanks. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Right. So he is. I don't know if he still does, but he was like Troma's web designer. So he's no. like really good friends with Lloyd Kaufman. So he's he's like their web. I don't know if he's still their web designer, but he's like like uh, uh, pretty good pretty good friends with them. He's a he's a Matt's a character, but I hear Lloyd's a character too. <laughs> I'm shocked you didn't get uh, David Naughton to uh, to star in this movie for you because I mean I love <laughs> David Naughton. He's David Naughton. <laughs> There's a whole story about us going to a convention, but yeah, he he was in uh in a, a American Werewolf in uh, in London, um, yeah. and uh, we were at a horror convention where he was signing autographs. But he also did like in the '70s Dr Pepper commercials, <laughs> so he had all these headshots with like Dr Peppers and stuff at his table. And like we stopped by and we're like, oh yeah, yeah, we know you know. And he was just so excited to talk to us because like nobody was at his table. <laughs> And he just kept talking to us, and uh, it, was, it was just hilarious. It was just, I, I felt bad, like we and we didn't get his autograph. Like we were just like, oh, yeah, no, like, I got his autograph. I got his did autograph. Did you? Did you? Oh, I you still have it. Yeah, yeah, I have it. But no, remember did, he did the theme song, right? Did he write the theme song for the Dr Pepper commercial? Yeah, he did. I think that's yeah. what the theme he's was. He's a musician yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, Aaron, we were just talking about this. David Naughton plays. Um, he is Elaine Bennis's boyfriend in the the alcoholic, the where he oh. does a sweater with the red dot, and he she's yeah, yeah. dating the alcoholic. Oh yeah, that's yeah, David yeah, yeah, that's David. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> everybody's in Seinfeld. Every, yeah, everybody. That's oh, yeah, everybody's. In we Seinfeld. just started. We yeah, were, right? we, we've been rewatching it, and I'm just like, I can't believe, like, especially Jerry's girlfriend. Like, I'm yeah. like, wow. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like it's crazy oh, yeah. how many well, people have won it. It's uh, and also the other one that is, that had like everyone is in is the X Files. Oh yeah, oh yeah, for yeah sure. yeah. Aaron got me. Aaron kind of got me uh, watching the X Files, and it was just whenever you watch those old TV shows, um, you just see like another friend of mine has me watching Veronica Mars, and you see all of these t- actors, and it's like this person, this person, this person's in there. <laughs> well, it's funny because yeah, I, I was like, actually talking about that this week because. I don't know why I was watching the, the second Ghost Rider movie with Nick Cage. I, I didn't remember. I didn't remember it at all. And all of a sudden, like Idris Elba's in it. I'm like, what is Idris oh. Elba doing in this movie? Like, what? Yeah. I'm like, was it like pre The Wire, or was it? I think it, it might have been during The Wire. During The Wire. You okay, know, so like, he was still like a television. Yeah, yeah. Or whatever. Yeah, but it's just Idris Elba. Idris Elba and Jeremy Renner are both in 28 Weeks Later, the, the 28 yeah. Days Later sequel. Oh, yes. Yeah, they're both in that. And wow. Rose Byrne's in that, too. Yeah, yep. I think that's wow. a better movie, honestly. That's my, that's my opinion. Better really? than uh, 28, better than 28 days? days? Oh, 
it's just like it's it's so gory and it's so just like fast paced and it's like the yeah. music is awesome. Like, okay, well, I, that's why probably why I like the first one because it's more it's like it's like an artsy. It something. is very yeah. much. They yeah, it's like di- they're two different movies. It's like comparing Alien right. and Alien. Right? <laughs> yeah. True. Like True. they're not. It's like yeah, it's got True. both got xenomorphs. Yeah, it's got both this, right. the same story, but they're two yeah. totally polar opposite. Well, they got a huge movies. budget probably for this. Like the they did. One. They like, did. Oh, yeah. it's so right. well. Like we'll give you tons of money. I mean, and, and Jeremy Renner's death scene was amazing. He was lit on fire and like uh, uh, it was I mean, crazy. Yeah. yeah, I need to watch that one it's, again because that one I've only seen once. It's like Halloween versus Halloween Resurrection, right? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> with, with Buster with Buster Rhymes. That's. I mean, we <laughs> love we love Buster Rhymes. I mean, that's, <laughs> don't don't talk. How many times do we listen to my convertible? Buster that Buster Rhymes album yep. over and over. Oh, that yeah. album's yep. awesome. Yep. So. A little used to a, a little a little used to drive us around in a, uh, a Cavalier red convertible. Chevy Cavalier convertible. And one time I traded him a DVD of Halloween H two O for Shotgun, just so I could shit, <laughs> just so I could sit in the front seat. <laughs> it was what we were we were driving a U of I to to yeah. hang out, yeah, to hang out with party and 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 everybody there. It was. Was Cook there too? Like everybody, because we yeah, were all Marty about. Cook, Spencer probably. Yeah, and uh, I call it in time. Who called Shotgun? That's what I want to know. <laughs> I just told him. I said I, nobody could call it because I said, dude, I want Shotgun. I'll give you this DVD. Did you like, did you, like call him at home beforehand? And you were like, yo, man, I, if I can ride Shotgun, no, I, I showed up to the to the house. You him? Yeah. yeah, I pulled him aside. I said, come over here. Really. <laughs> Oh, it's because it was it was it was four of us in my car, right? Because it was yeah, uh, that's a long Travis freaking ride. It's a three hour yeah. drive, right? And uh, and Robert's yeah. like, here, I, I, I know you want this. This is Halloween H two O on DVD. I will give this to you for shotgun before before we packed up my car with everybody's bags. And I was like, all right, sounds <laughs> good. I'll take it. Was that both ways? <laughs> of course, it was no. Both. That was one way. <laughs> no, it was one way. I had I to do remember. other things to get the other way. <laughs> Other things that we can't you talk want to about. Tell us about that, life. Robert. Yeah, no. <laughs> His it lips were chapped. Blink One Eighty Two shirt. <laughs> oh no, no, we can't talk about oh, the Blink One Eighty Two T-shirt. That's a uh, that's that's for the the Geeks After Dark show. Um, yeah, that's another podcast. <laughs> oof. Yeah, TVMA for sure. Um, no, but it was, it was great talking to you guys. I'm so excited for. Uh, you know, for you guys uh, hitting your goals on this movie, I can't, you know, like, let everybody know, like, I'm supporting it. So, you know, hopefully you guys can go out there and support. And even even if you can't support financially, as, as Aaron said, like, just go like the page on, uh, uh, was it Seed? Is it Seed and Seek? I keep getting that wrong. Seed, seed and Spark. Seed and Spark. Sorry. I, I'm like, I'm keeping it hide yeah. and seek. I'm like, I'm like, it's not hide and seek. Like, yeah. Seed and Spark. Well, what's, uh, that's another U of I story. <laughs> So many U of I stories, yes. Um, um, yeah, Seed and Spark, and two, you know, um, even, you know, go ahead and uh, follow the at Live, Laugh, Love movie page on uh, Instagram, because we're posting, um, you know, behind the scenes, excuse me, behind the scenes stuff and, um, you know, promo stills, and I put little little facts about our, our cast and our crew and everybody on there, so I try to keep it active. Did you have any other social media up? up? I know you're on LinkedIn, right? Like, because you yelled at me for not liking a LinkedIn picture that I. Sent. Yeah, the, the the LinkedIn thing. I was I was just telling Aaron. It's like I put something about me doing something creative on LinkedIn, and nobody likes it. But if I put something about like you know corporate strategy, it's like people are like bowing down. How does that work? Well, you know? because because <laughs> you know I'm in corporate America, and that's what we like. You know, that's yeah, but I'm trying to break up the day. Nope. Be like, oh, Robert doesn't only do insurance. Nope, nobody cares. It's all right. Well, I didn't see it, so I apologize. <laughs> I, I, I get right, a text it says, yelling at me that I did not like something that he posted. <laughs> and I'm like, you I like to- this corporate thing, and I'm like, yeah, I know the, I know the person who's, who's yeah. doing that, so I liked it. <laughs> yeah, he liked some corporate thing. I'm like, this I, is what you like. And the effort like that Robert put into this, uh, this, this like complaint to you is, is impressive as well oh, oh <laughs> well yeah. you know i i gotta i gotta i gotta bust his chops since i don't get to see him that often that's kind of the relationship we have 
I, I do I do miss you, Robert. I, I do a lot. That's uh, I'm I'm really happy to talk with you guys, Aaron. I'm really really happy to meet with you. And, yeah, it's a pleasure, man. Thanks for having and, us. And everyone, you know, please help support the help support this movie. You know, I, I want to see it in some festivals. I want to I, I want I can't wait to see it. So um, thank you guys again, and that's it for tonight. And until next time, everybody, keep it geeky. So